Welcome to Word of the Day Wednesdays. Yes, I know it's Thursday, but you guys, it has been a whirlwind of traveling to Paris, as some of you know, and overcoming this jet lag. Okay, so we're doing our Word of the Day Wednesdays today on Thursday. And unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to do one last week because I was out of the country, so we're going to do a two for one bonus. Okay. So, my name is Nicole D. Miller. I'm the author of When Love Wins. When Love Wins is an urban Christian fiction story. It's the tale of two young women with a rift in their relationship when Natalie, the faith-based social justice advocate writer, loses her mom. She moves in with her cousin Ashley and uncle thinking she's going to receive support in her grief recovery. Unfortunately, there is animosity and beef coming from Ashley the urban, socialite, free spirit fashionista. And it seems like it has something to do with Ashley's ex, Phil and Natalie, but there is more to the story than meets the eye. So this book deals with mental health struggles such as anxiety, depression, cutting. It deals with grief recovery, as I mentioned. It deals with um, parent absenteeism. It deals with friendship, sisterhood, love, and faith. So to learn more, you can go to winlovewins.love. All right, so you guys know every week I do a Word of the Day Wednesdays where I piggyback off of my latest blog. And as I explained previously, I missed last week. So I'm going to do a two for one. So the blog that I posted two weeks ago is called We've Come Too Far. And in all honesty and transparency, I do believe I've used this title before. <laughs> but I was too lazy to research it. And that was the title that came to me that I was inspired by. So I went with it for this blog post. So in this particular blog post, I'm sharing about the hoopla that I went through before my actual trip to Paris. A lot of you guys know Paris has been a long awaited dream for me. So for this experience to happen and manifest, it was a big deal. But nothing is smooth sailing. And I think with social media and all of that, we kind of only show the highlights. But what I like to do in my blog is I like to share what's going on in between the highlights, right? So, with this uh, Paris flight, I don't know if you guys have been flying lately, but the delays are insane. I feel like every trip I went on in the last year has been delayed. Like, I went to one of my best friend's um, birthday to celebrate her birthday in Atlanta, Georgia, just a couple months ago, and I got delayed like four hours in the Atlanta, Georgia airport, and anyone who knows that airport knows it is a Freddy Krueger nightmare by itself. But anyways, I digress. So this time around, I get there early, I'm thinking I'm good, I got my pre-TSA, yada yada. No, delayed, okay? And this was in, this was insane because I had a connecting flight. So I had a connecting flight in Washington, and if I didn't make that flight, you guessed it, I would miss Paris. And my best friend was already on her way there from Texas, so she would have to be in this foreign country by herself. <laughs> So my wheels are spinning where I'm just like, oh, my, the planner in me is going. Like, okay, if I miss this flight, what am I going to do? Yada, yada. Initially, I wasn't that phased. But then as we got closer and closer to the time where I could potentially miss this flight, I started being anxious, you guys. In all transparency, I was, I was anxious. So I shot out a little quick uh, text to my prayer warriors in my life. And it was so interesting because... This text was being responded to by a lot of people, but one person in particular is my spiritual mother. And she had just happened to be traveling, and I knew she was traveling. And she was like, yeah, I'm so sorry about the delays. I'll be praying. I'm getting into Cleveland now. So the funny thing is, in order for me to see what my next steps are, I went to a different gate so that I could find out, you know, what I should be doing. And literally, within moments of her sending her text, saying that she was praying, saying that she had landed, she's in front of me. So she actually walked out of that gate while I'm standing there. I wasn't even supposed to be at that gate. My gate was a different gate. But I just went over there because there was an available agent. And I took that as such encouragement because I was just, like, freaking out. And so seeing that was a great sign, and I connected with some of the other passengers, and they were believers too, and we were just like, we're just praying about this flight, this plane. And lo and behold, my best friend had already boarded, and she said that they were holding the plane for us. And I told my, my cohort, is what I call them in the blog, like my cohort of travelers, like, they're going to hold this plane for us, we're going to make this flight. 
But it was not easy because literally we landed the 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 air, uh, airport is insane in Washington. It was like a mile run slash walk to the shuttle, then the walkway, then all the things. And so finally, I get on the plane. <laughs> And literally, travelers are congratulating me. This one couple was like, we're on this flight because we missed our flight two days ago. That could have been me. It could have taken me two whole days to get on that plane. Even when I was working with the travel agent, he was looking for flights for me. And he was just like, oh, yeah, you're probably going to have to leave in the morning. And then your connecting flight will be in Germany. And I'm like, Germany? Like, I'm not trying to be in I don't know Germany. I barely know French. You know, so anyways, thankfully none of that happened. And the wild thing is, as soon as I got on the flight, within minutes, they closed the doors. Like, it was like minutes. And I was like, thank you, Lord. So the fun thing is that not only did I almost miss my flight going to Paris, and I haven't blogged about this yet, but I'll tell you guys who are on my live. Not only did I almost miss my flight going to Paris, I almost missed it coming back home because I mixed up my times and I was looking at the wrong time on my itinerary and I thought I had to leave in the evening and I really had to leave in the early afternoon and thank God United Airlines, which kudos to them, even with all their delays, they have excellent service. I love flying them. I love that they have TVs and USB cords and all the things, right? And food. And they give you vegan options, which a lot of you guys know I'm doing the vegan thing now. So that was dope. But, um, so yeah, so coming back, thankfully United Airlines sent me a little text like, oh, we're boarding your flight in two hours. I'm like, two hours? <laughs> so what I didn't take into account that I will going forward when I travel internationally is like customs is a thing, right? And I had to recheck my bags and I had to go through security, oh, which I did get stopped at security. But the wild thing is, Paris actually stops you. They stop the uh, check-in process, like, with your bags. And that's something that we don't do, to my knowledge, here in the States. Like, you could be running late for your plane. They're not about to cut you off from checking your bags, probably because you're just going to catch another flight. In Paris, they shut it down. They were like, oh, no, honey. Like, you are late. We are not checking your bag. I'm like, my flight is still here. Like, my plane is not left. Thankfully, I had favor and they opened the, um, the thing for me and the guy behind me had favor too because I was there. So long story short, I did all of that running through this air, airport, barely understanding what the signs are saying because I have speak French. And thank God I finally make it there. Another 40 minute wait. <laughs> okay. Another 40 minute wait at the gate and then another hour wait while we're in the plane because of weather. So I just was grateful I made the flight. I didn't even care about the waiting. I was just like, who cares, because I made this flight, and so I finally um, take off, we take off, it's a seven, eight hour flight, and I land in Jersey, and of course, more delays, and, but this time it was like an hour and a half, which is minimal compared to what other people are dealing with, but I didn't even care, I'm like, I'm on U.S. soil, so, my point is, <laughs> the blog post is called, We've Come Too Far, because all of these obstacles were hitting me before my actual trip, and I just felt like it was opposition to God's promises and what I knew I was called to. And so having that opposition was just confirmation that I am supposed to go. And it manifested like I did. I had a divine assignment there. Me and my bestie had an amazing time. I was making sure to post on my stories. Sorry if you missed it because you know they're only 24 hours. I probably should have did the highlights, but I forgot. Um, but yeah, you know, I did a couple of posts on my Facebook and on my business page. If you follow facebook.com backslash HCOHB. And then of course I did some reels. I had this vision to do a TikTok in front of the Eiffel Tower, which my bestie did with me. So we killed it during the day and the night because at night it lights up. Oh, it was amazing. So the whole experience was surreal and beautiful and everything I thought it would be. And then some... And so the blog that I'm going to talk about now is called Black Girls in Paris, where I actually talk about us hitting up La Louvre and the Eiffel Tower and the Arc de Triomphe and all of the spots that you think about. Um, we got to see the Mona Lisa. We got to see, you know, Van Gogh's works and Starry Night. And it were all of these spaces, but we didn't see us in those spaces. And so... The blog that I just released this week is called Black Girls in Paris, but it's part one because there's so much that I had to split it up. 
So tune in for part two next week. It's going to drop and I will share about what I learned about black and brown folks in Paris and how we impacted the history there that we're not necessarily known for impacting and we're not really in those conversations when you go to those hot spots in Paris or visiting as a tourist. So but what I'll say overall is that the French people were so nice and I was so tickled by their sense of humor because they seem like, you know, not uh, inviting, <laughs> like their facial expressions seem not inviting. And then they would like crack a smile or crack a joke, but it would be really dry. And I love their humor. It's like super dry humor. So anyways, I had an amazing time. Um, me and my bestie went for our 40th. It was a dream come true. And you can learn more about that at NicoleDMiller.com. All right, guys. So normally I have like a busload of events <laughs> that I'm doing, but I'm just trying to recoup. Like I'm just trying to get back into the swing of things. I feel like today was the first day I didn't have jet lag. And a friend of mine told me that I should look into grounding and I totally forgot. So I'm probably going to ground a little bit because I'm about to be working in my yard. But, um, but yeah, so I do have the newsletter dropping. It is late because I was traveling. But if you're on my newsletter, if you're on my email list, you'll get the newsletter. So make sure you subscribe at NicoleDMiller.com. And then I know I have Authors Alley in August, but I'm not sure of more recent events. So you'll have to stay posted or stay tuned when I post them and share them on my email list. All right. So have a great day. Honestly, I am like burning up in here. Even though I'm in the basement, it's hot. I should have brought the being on fan down here. But anyways. Enjoy the rest of your day and definitely save, share, like, and subscribe.